Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on entering multiple response items into SPSS. Oftentimes in counseling research, we use surveys to gather data about participants. And a popular type of survey item is a multiple response item. And I'm going to use Excel to demonstrate that. So you can see I have this Excel worksheet and I have check boxes here and there's five and there's five symptoms. And let's say that we're working with the population where we know that these five symptoms cover the entire possible range of symptoms. Clearly in the world of mental health there are more symptoms than just these five, but for this population we're just using these five. And say we're interested in which symptoms participants had during the last seven days. So this type of survey item would say check all that apply. So a participant could check just anxiety, they could check all of these options or different combinations. For this particular survey item, there are actually 32 combinations. And I'll show you how I arrived at that number 32. So we know that when a participant looks at this particular survey item, that they can select none of these symptoms. They can select all the symptoms, right? So that's zero and five. But they can also select just one, two, three, or four of the symptoms, because this is a check all that apply type item. So we can use the combination function in Excel, C-O-M-B-I-N. And first you want the number and that's the total number of items that the participant can select from, and that's five. And then the number chosen. So in this case, be comma and then zero. If I auto fill this down, I can get the total number of combinations for each of the six levels, zero through five. And if I highlight all these, if I select this range, you can see the sum down here is 32. So there's 32 possible combinations for this item. So when deciding how to enter the data collected from this particular survey item into SPSS, we realized fairly quickly that it would be impractical to code 1 through 32 or 0 through 31. That would be difficult and analyzing that data it would be particularly difficult. We would have to identify each combination, then assign it a specific value. So rather than taking that route, what we would do is we would create five separate variables. And for each variable, we would have two possibilities. And that would be a no, meaning they did not check a particular item like anxiety, or a yes, where they did check it. So in this particular, say I check anxiety and depression here, so for this particular survey item, this would be yes for anxiety, yes for depression, and no for substance use, panic, and anger. So let's take a look at SPSS and see how we would enter these in. So you can see I want to take a sample of 20 participants, so I have ID number here, 1001 through 1020. And now I want to create five variables that match the five symptoms I had listed on that Excel spreadsheet. So first I would go in and name the first one anxiety. And you can see that by default it's numeric and I do want that. It's uh, decimals is two. I want decimals to be equal to zero. Values, I'll come back to this because I'm going to uh, enter in the values 0 and 1 and then assign them to no and yes. Uh, but first I want to go here to measure. Now this measure would be nominal. You can't really rank one above the other, so in this case it's just nominal. The role would still be input, allowing it to the right would still be fine and we'll leave missing set to the default, which is none. So 
for values, when I click into the cell, we get this blue square. Click on that. And I want to assign the value 0 to the label no. So in this particular case, if somebody entered a 0 in the anxiety variable, that would indicate that they did not check off that symptom. And then 1 would be yes. Click OK. And then go to the next variable. In this case, it was depression. And then I can just move right through these uh, fairly quickly. Substance use. Notice I don't use any space there. Panic and anger. Now, one nice feature of SPSS in terms of assigning these values is we can copy what I have here in anxiety, the 0 equaling no and the 1 equaling yes. I can copy that, control C, and I can paste it to the remaining variables, which actually saves quite a bit of time. We can see after I've pasted these values in that instead of 0, it says 0, .00, and that's because the value here in decimals so I'm just going to correct this to 0. Now it'll work even if it was set at 2, but it's just easier to interpret as 0. Just easier to work with. And then over here for the measure, I set these all to nominal. So now I've quickly configured all five variables using the yes and no possible answers. So now if I move back to the data view, now clearly there's no data populated here, but if I were to enter in a record, say, for a participant that checked off substance use and anger but nothing else, it would be 0, 0, 1, 0, 1. And if I move up here to the A1 button and click it, it'll give me the values I've assigned to the numeric values, right, the string values here. So you have no, no, yes, no, and yes. Now, of course, SPSS is going to use the numeric values. And as long as it's code this way, it doesn't matter what view we're in, the analyses are going to return the same results. I hope you found this video on entering multiple response items into SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.